do more than merely just make le legal immigration more streamlined, but we can also do it by preventing people from wanting to have to leave in the first place, by helping their communities, in fact, better their circumstances. And so uh, I, uh, I hope, uh, you know, and by the way, my proposals are supported by the Chamber of Commerce, by the American Labor Movement, not, I mean, which is an unusual coalition, and a whole range of people. The point here is that uh, uh, my Republican friends in Congress should join us in the solutions. And the one last point I'll make, and I'm sorry to go on so long, but we spend a lot of time talking about it, is we have to increase the technological capabilities of the border, both to intercept illegal drugs and other contraband, as well as people being smuggled across the border. We have now the ability to use, and use, some of you have seen them, I know you all, you have, I'm sure, these trucks that ride alongside of a tractor trailer. It's like a giant x-ray machine, and it can determine what's inside that tractor trailer, and thousands cross the border every day in legal commerce. And so we're allowed to determine whether or not there are fentanyls in there, drugs in there, people being smuggled across the border. We're going to provide significantly more of those vehicles for the people to be able to determine at the border what need what, what what is coming across legally and illegally. A lot more to say, but I probably already said too much. Thank you. Por parte de la prensa de Canadá, preguntará David Cochrane de CBC. David Cochrane, CBC, señor from Canada. Justin Trudeau, Will primer be ministro de Canadá. Asking a question to your question, and I'll fold the Prime Haiti Minister question Trudeau. in as well. Okay, uh, thank you, Prime Minister. Uh, a question for you and for President Biden as well. President Biden, you've talked a lot about economic cooperation and building continental supply chains and resilience here. But since you've been president, uh, Canadians have seen what they consider to be protectionist U.S. protectionism from you and things such as the Buy American Act. So what assurances can you give the Canadians and Mexicans watching this at home that there will be equal partners in the economic opportunity you're talking about in this transition and not have to confront further attempts at American protectionism? President Lopez Obrador, if you have anything to say on that, we'd love to hear it. And, and Prime Minister Trudeau, if you can answer the Haiti question, but also explain to us um, what steps your government needs to take to take advantage of this opportunity on the continental supply chain resiliency to ensure that Canadian companies make things like semiconductors and don't just supply critical minerals to American companies. Thank you very much. Um, first on Haiti, the situation in Haiti is heartbreaking. Canada uh, has stood with the people of Haiti for decades, uh, including over the past two years with multiple uh, interventions with the UN, with other partners, on the ground, uh, military interventions, police interventions, uh, even prison guards. Uh, we have continued to stand with the people of Haiti, and we will continue to. Obviously, this current situation is heart-wrenching, uh, and we need to continue to be there for the people of Haiti, but we need to make sure that the solutions are driven by the people of Haiti themselves. That's why Canada's focus, as we've stepped up over the past months, uh, has been, first of all, in putting significant sanctions on the elites who are responsible for so much of the violence and political instability in Haiti. A handful of small, extraordinarily wealthy families in Haiti have been uh, causing much of the strife because of uh, political and uh, pecuniary interests. Uh, and that is why the sanctions that Canada has put forward uh, are uh, causing significant impacts on the ground. We're also moving forward with significant supports for the Haitian National Police, uh, including with armored vehicles that the Americans have stepped up on as well, uh, to ensure that the police is able uh, to stabilize the situation on the ground. Obviously, there's much more to do. We sent down uh, a group of um, interlocutors to work both on the political side, but also to liaise directly uh, with the security officials on the ground so that we can be responsive in immediate ways to what is needed for the Haitian National Police to get a better control and ensure greater stability for the people of Haiti. The UN called in September for the free flow of food, medicines, water, and fuel. Uh, much of that has started again. It's still not where it needs to be, but we're going to continue to lean in 
on ensuring that that happens. But at the same time, uh, we are working with partners across the Caribbean and indeed uh, with the United States and Mexico to ensure uh, that if the situation starts to deteriorate once again, uh, we will have uh, options. But like I said, uh, we're going to make sure that what we do this time uh, allows for the Haitian people to get the situation under control. And a big part of that is putting those sanctions on the Haitian leadership uh, that are responsible for so much of the misery people are going through. In regards uh, to the continental supply chain, that was at the center of our conversations uh, throughout this, uh, this uh, North American Leaders Summit. Uh, the idea that we already work extraordinarily well together uh, with NAFTA, uh, but there's so much more we can be doing at a time where supply chains around the world are under increasing stress and uh, you know, significant economic actors around the world are becoming less reliable as partners uh, and less desirable as partners in building the technologies and the energy futures that we want. That's why, and you brought up a few examples of it, our critical minerals approach, a strategy that we just released a few weeks ago, uh, is focused not just on mining the critical minerals in, that Canada has that North America and the world needs uh, in responsible environmental uh, partnership with indigenous peoples, uh, doing it the right way, but also the development, the processing, the transforming into batteries, uh, the transforming into technology that goes along the value chain as something that is important for Canada. And yes, it's something that we're continuing to look at. It's the same thing uh, with electric vehicles, where uh, we're building electric vehicles with our partners uh, in Mexico and uh, in the United States. But Canada, again, from the critical minerals that go into the batteries and the batteries themselves that we're starting to build uh, to, the, uh, to the steel and aluminum that is amongst the cleanest in the world being developed in Canada, uh, to the technology, the innovation from AI to uh, engineering that is part of it. Canada is very much uh, a partner in uh, what we're developing in terms of more resilient supply chains. So there's lots more to do indeed. Even on semiconductors, the largest semiconductor packaging plant uh, in North America, I believe, is in Bromont, Quebec. And packaging of semiconductors uh, is actually how you assemble them into uh, a unit that can then do uh, the you know, high uh, value um, calculations and computations that need to happen. These are the kinds of things uh, that Canada is very much focused on in ensuring not just prosperity right now, but good jobs as we move towards a environmentally responsible, net zero, uh, socially inclusive future that uh, the middle class in all three of our countries are relying on. Uh, oui, brièvement en français. Uh, sur Haiti, Briefly in uh, French, Canada in regard to Haiti, to Canada pour, uh, has always been there to help the Haitian people and we are working with our partners in the region uh, to, uh, to guarantee better, better solutions for the Haitian people. We have laid sanctions against the elites. We are helping the national police in Haiti. We have had good exchanges, good dialogues uh, with our partners in the U.S. and Caribbean countries to guarantee that we will uh, be able to preserve and uh, to have the people of Haiti at the, cent uh, the Haiti at the center of the solutions in regard to the economic integration and the competitiveness in North America, uh, be it uh, electric vehicles, be it critical minerals, stra strategy minerals, and the ones we're going to develop to produce, to produce the necessary technologies or in regard to any other technologies in order to work together because we know that North America can offer many solutions, great competitiveness to the rest of the world, and we are a true force to reckon with in our continent. Sara Pablo, de Grupo Formula. Sara Pablo of the Formula Group will pose a question to the constitutional president of the United Mexican States. Yes, uh, good afternoon, presidents, prime minister. 
And we have a few questions for President Biden. I know that recently you announced the United States will be receiving citizens from Venezuela, Haiti, Cuba, and Nicaragua. Uh, what is the time frame? And uh, are you thinking of expanding the no number of people you will be receiving? And is this uh, some other nations could be included? And what uh, is the amount and technological improvements the United States? And for President Lopez Obrador, how will Mexico be prepared to receive all the migrants uh, the United States will be expelling from its territory and the new migration center in the southern part of Mexico? What is it all about? And then after this 10th summit, are we going to be seeing changes in migration policies and the way migrants are being treated? And finally, let me this is for President Biden. Fentanyl. What concrete actions are you going to be implementing? What's the impact uh, uh, of the detention of Ovidio Guzman because the cartel of the Pacific is one of the main fentanyl producers? And finally, another question on uh, energy sector consultations. Uh, President Biden, Prime Minister Trudeau, did you discuss those? Uh, discussions about uh, the USMCA, the bueno, Temec, pues, eh, very well. We did uh, speak about migration eh, in a very broad manner. Desde luego que of course, hay there is cooperation el de with Unidos. the U.S. administration, y al mismo and tiempo, at the same time, el we have the commitment De proteger to protect a los migrantes. migrants. Lo que ha el what President, President Biden, Biden has proposed es is absolutely cierto. true. Si if atraviesan nuestro país, if uh, migrants cross our country, casos, and in some países, cases they also go through other countries Latina, in Latin America, to arrive in the United States, Los migrantes migrants muchos are uh, facing so many risks when they do that. Starting with the fact that uh, they are victims de los of the traficantes de traficants, the smugglers, the human los traffickers, los known coyotes, as the coyotes or polleros, que les and they charge migrants a high amount of money to eh, al take them northbound. Esos, eh, now, polleros, coyotes, those polleros or coyotes eh, have redes. networks, y and a su vez, at the same time, they hire camiones. Uh, 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 trailers, uh, trucks, uh, truck trailers, uh, uh, the box of the trailer, they can transport up to 300, 400 people. So the, the, uh, constant accidents are taking place on the highways of Mexico, the roads of Mexico, unfortunately. And the worst of it all es que is that uh, many migrants are being kidnapped by criminal groups, asesinado. by criminals. They're being murdered. And this is doloroso. very sad, very painful. Eso, That's why I'm speaking about protection. Nosotros we what we want is a, an in-depth a, a solution. A, a, we've always said that people, just as President Biden said, people do not leave their towns, their countries, their families because they like to do it. This is not a pleasure for them. They do it because of the needs they have. This is a necessity. We've always said we have to look at the root causes of all this. We have to try for people to be able to work and be happy where they were born, where their relatives, their customs, their traditions, their cultures are. And we need to invest for that. We need to invest in development of uh, the countries 
with more inequality and poverty. Because migration has to be an optional thing, not a forced situation. However, in the meantime, because we're, of course, doing everything we can to accomplish this, Mexico, with just a few resources, is helping. I have already mentioned that. We are working. We are uh, working with communities in El Salvador and Honduras. We're going to be starting this in uh, Guatemala and Belize as well. However, we do need to promote uh, development even more and well-being to ensure guaranteeing opportunities for those that are forced to migrate and leave their communities. We are not thinking of building any center in the southeastern part of Mexico, any migration center. We're not thinking of that. What we do is help with shelters, uh, with health care services, with food services as well. That's the way we help uh, migrants. And, and we do celebrate the fact that the U.S. administration has uh, taken, uh, made the decision, rather, to uh, have an uh, orderly migration flow. In the case, for instance, of our Venezuelan brothers and sisters, and I understand that this plan will also be extended, will be expanded uh, to benefit other migrants, other countries. We know for sure that since the announcement was made, saying that uh, those uh, permits, humanitarian visas, were going to be granted in the case, for instance, of the Venezuelan population. Uh, we've seen a, a decrease uh, in uh, migration flows. Uh, people crossing uh, Mexico to migrate. Uh, this has been a considerable reduction because uh, this was announced in the United States. And this was uh, made public everywhere, saying that 24,000 humanitarian visas or permits were going to be granted and that the formalities had to be covered, the paperwork, although there are some requirements that have to be met. People decided to do it. Uh, so. What happened was that uh, a new path has been opened. It didn't exist before. Everything was arriving in the United States, risking everything, risking people's lives, of course, at the risk of their own lives. Now that this mechanism has been approved, people can file their own request. And this might take time, however, there's hope, a hope that this is, a purpose is going to be accomplished, the purpose of going to the United States to work, to live. We celebrate this. And we think that I insist what Canada is doing is also the right thing to do. And I was uh, talking about our own experience as well. And uh, you can look at data. It's there for you to look at. Because of uh, circumstances in the past, migration corresponded to the sister countries of Central America. That were, those were the main migration flows from Central America. But for a long time as well, Mexicans migrating, 
who were going to look for a better living standard, who were going to look for a job in the United States. And just imagine, there are 40 million Mexicans in the United States. 40 million who who were born here in Mexico, or they're the children of uh, people who were born in Mexico. Now, what have we been able to accomplish with all the support for well-being? We've uh, reduced uh, the number of Mexican migrants. Yes. So many. There are less migrants abandoning Mexico now because there's public investment because out of 35 million families, 30 million families of Mexican families are now receiving at least a program for a well-being program. And this is a very direct manner of uh, doing this here in Mexico. All the senior citizens, 65 or over, receive a pension. This is a universal program in Mexico. 11 million of uh, senior citizens in Mexico are getting a pension. 11 million students of uh, low-income families, of poor families, are getting grants, they're get, getting scholarships. All the boys and girls with disabilities also have their own pension. We have a program for reforestation. It is the most important reforestation program in the world. And we are planting over one million hectares of fruit and uh, timber trees. And we are giving jobs to over 400,000 peasants that are growing and planting those trees. So then all these programs help so that people may be staying in their own communities, in their towns. We built the Dos Bocas refinery, 35,000 jobs. We are now building the Mayan train, which is the biggest railroad works in the world because it's 1,554 kilometers, 1,554 kilometers in five states of Mexico. All the Maya region, which is one of the most important archaeological zones of the world. Well, there, People are working building this uh, railroad system. About 300,000 people are building the train. So that's really the option. That's the path to follow. Development, well-being. And I insist, I repeat, I truly celebrate that the Canadian government and the U.S. administration as well are now attending to the migration problem with this type of approach is quite lamentable that uh, there are others, other politicians, other presidents and public officials who are acting in, in, a, in a very inhuman manner. Right now, in this winter season, for instance, with all due respect, I'm not saying this in a very direct manner, but uh, what I'm saying is that, I mean, uh, one of the governors of uh, our neighboring country, 
They headed a movement to take migrants to New York, to Washington, and just drop them there. This is politicking. This is completely inhuman. This should not be done because there are those who forget that we're all migrants. How is it that uh, that great nation, the United States, was developed with migrants? Thanks to that. So then, we have to continue seeking, looking for alternatives, uh, just as, uh, for instance, also in the case of violence. We have to look into the root causes of violence. And also in the case of our country, uh, youth uh, were never cared for, no services for young people. The only thing that was done was uh, call them young people who didn't work, who didn't study. This is a the path of antisocial behaviors. But we didn't really take care of young people in Mexico. However, we now have a program devoted to young people. This program never existed in the past. There are 2.4 million young people who are being hired. They are working, and uh, they're apprentices. ¿Qué what are we doing? Eh, we are taking el away from them this uh, La reserva, culture, those seats, the reserves, the stock. We're taking that away from criminal groups. No We're taking youth. No we don't want our youth to be hooked. Que we don't want those criminal groups to be taking our youth away. We jóvenes. want to give them opportunities. That's exactly what we're doing eh, in Mexico. In Mexico. Y and termino, let me conclude eh, also eh, otra highlighting uh, uh, another importante. difference, which is quite important. No hay corrupción. There is no corruption en el gobierno que represento. in the administration, no the government impunidad. that I represent. There's no impunity either. Está bien marcada, bien it is, uh, we have painted Una this line that it is very clear. It uh, is one thing no and the authority delictuoso. is a different thing. There is no criminal association or partnership Digamos, as before. Yes, uh, this, uh, it's, uh, we're even ashamed to mention this, uh, uh, that we, to mention that those who were in charge of guaranteeing or ensuring public security were at the service, in the past, were at the service of criminal organizations. This doesn't happen in Mexico anymore. That's why in this meeting, this summit, we just held today, all three governments of the three countries, we have reached agreements to continue working together to get peace, to have peace in all three countries, so that we can ensure and guarantee security of our peoples. That's all I wanted to answer to your question, Madam. Yes, we are doing that. Just as I was telling you that in the case of migration, first there were brothers and sisters from Central America and also from Mexico, but now in recent times, a lot of migrants from Venezuela, from Nicaragua, Colombia, Ecuador, there's 
we do have a situation. This is a, uh, uh, these are changes in places. Where we're uh, uh,